Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be diving deeper into E2 reactions. So elimination type 2 reactions that I went over in my previous video. We're going to be talking about how they are regioselective. So the size of the base can determine if you're going to get the Zaitsev or the Hoffman product. And how E2 reactions are also stereoselective. That means we have to decide, is the double bond going to be cis or is the double bond going to be trans at the end of our reaction? And we will figure this out by looking at the Newman projection. Let's say I told you this reaction proceeded via E2 and I wanted you to identify the major product. Step one, you always want to look at your alpha carbon and ask what type of substrate is this? This is a three prime substrate. And if you remember from last, and if you remember from my last video, three prime substrates could proceed via E2 or E1. I told you this is E2, but let's really figure out why it is E2. And this has to do with the strength of our base and if the leaving group is good or bad. We have a strong base because we have an atom that is negatively charged. And our leaving group would be a good but not excellent. leaving group. Therefore, since we have a strong base and a leaving group that is just okay, this is going to proceed via E2. For this reaction to proceed via E1, we would need a very weak base and we would need an excellent leaving group. So this reaction is indeed going to proceed via E2. So then we need to identify our beta carbons. So we have a beta carbon on the right hand side as well as one on the left hand side. Well, there is technically two on the left hand side, but the two carbons that I will highlight in blue are both primary carbons. Therefore, they will result in the exact same product. So we only need to worry about one of them. So let's say the base goes and extracts one of the blue hydrogens. What do we get? We get a double bond in between carbons one, two, three, four. Once again, this is arbitrary. In between carbons one and two. And if the base goes and extracts the green hydrogen on carbon number three, the other beta carbon, we will get a double bond in between carbons two and three. So now the question is, what is the major product? Well, this is determined by the size of the base. This base is not big and bulky. It is relatively small. So therefore, this guy can sneak in and grab the more sterically hindered hydrogen and go two in, two over, two out. Therefore, the major product is going to be the more substituted double bond, the Zaitsev product. This is our major. So let's compare this to a situation where we would not get the Zaitsev product as our major product. For example, consider the same substrate, but this time the base is OTBU. Hmm in comparison to what we just had, which was an O-ethyl group. We can see right off the bat that this base is big and it is bulky in comparison to the NaO-ethyl group. So right away, I'm going to be thinking, haha, this is going to result in the Hoffman. So this guy is too big and bulky to go and extract a hydrogen from the green carbon. Therefore, it needs to pick a hydrogen on a beta carbon that is less sterically hindered. So it is going to go and extract the blue hydrogen via two in, two over, two out. And if we label our carbons, one, two, three, four, we can see the head of an arrow is pointed in between atoms one and two. Therefore, a double bond is going to end up between atoms one and two. Therefore, we are going to result in the Hoffman as our major product. 
specifically, it is 72% Hoffman. And the other product, let's say if the green hydrogen was stolen and we got the exact same thing as last time, this would be our minor product, the Zate Sif, and it actually comes in at 28% Zate Sif. So the majority of the product formed will be the Hoffman product if you use a base like OTB. So now let's compare this to an even bigger base. So consider the same substrate, but let's say we use this base. So OTBU has an O with a negative charge connected to a carbon with three methyl groups. This base has an O with a negative charge connected to a carbon with three ethyl groups. So this group is much bigger and much bulkier. Therefore, what is this going to do to the major product formed? Well, it is going to increase the amount of Hoffman formed as the major product because it is even bigger and bulkier than our last base. So now this guy experiences even more steric hindrance than OTBU. Therefore, it is going to be forced to go and grab that blue hydrogen. Two in, two over, two out. But now we are actually getting the Hoffman formed 92% of the time. Whereas only 8% of the time do we ever get the Zate sieve product. So what did we just learn? Going back to our substrate. If you toss in a relatively small base like NaOET, you will get major Zate sieve product. If you toss in OTBU, your major product is going to be the Hoffman at 72%. But if you toss in an even bigger, bulkier base, you are also going to get your major product as the Hoffman, but it is going to be a major product of 92%. So almost all products are going to be the Hoffman, which is the least substituted double bond product. So as you increase the size of the base, you increase the amount of Hoffman product that you obtain. So as I increase the size of the base, I'm going to correspond to increasing the percent Hoffman as the major product. All right, guys, now let's discuss stereoselectivity of E2 reactions. So consider this substrate. Our alpha carbon is secondary, and there's two beta carbons, where both of those beta carbons have two protons. That means a base could come in and that means the base could come in and eliminate either of these hydrogens to form either the cis or the trans double bond, where the cis product is when both of the priority groups are on the same side, whereas the trans product is when both priority groups are on opposite sides. So when you have a beta carbon with two hydrogens, you can get both of these products. But when you have a situation as such in substrate number two, if we identify our alpha carbon, which is going to be our carbon with the leaving group, the bromine, only one of the beta carbons even has a hydrogen to begin with. So let's label the beta carbons in blue. So this would be a beta carbon and this would be a beta carbon. We can see this carbon has no hydrogens. It is a tertiary carbon. So we can't even 
extract an H from that carbon to begin with. So it's not even our beta right now. We're not focusing in on it. Our other beta carbon only has one hydrogen. One H on beta carbon. So in this example, there's two beta positions where one of the positions has no protons. It is a four prime carbon and the other position only has one proton. So when we get this situation, a mixture of stereoisomers is not obtained. In this case, there's only going to be one stereoisomeric product. And to figure out which one we get, we need to look at the Newman projection. So let's take this structure. Oh no, not the Newman. Yes, the Newman. And if Newman projections scare you, please go back to my video on Newman projections, where I go over how to perform a Newman projection in a step-by-step -step fashion. In this video, I'm going to just be touching on how to get the Newman projection because I'm going to be assuming that you already have prior knowledge on how to obtain one. So let's say we choose to stand on the left-hand side where I draw my little person, where their left hand is going to be the dash green, and their right hand is going to be the wedge in pink. I draw my circle, and I draw my left hand side and my right hand side in the perspective of the little person that I drew, left hand and right hand, where on my left hand at the front of the Newman, so C1, which is going to be the blue beta with the hydrogen and the phenyl group. On my left-hand side, I'm going to have a methyl. On the right-hand side, I'm going to have the phenyl group. I'm going to denote this as pH for simplicity. And going downwards, I have my H. In the back, on my left-hand side, I have my tert butyl group. So my carbon with three methyl groups. On my right hand side, I have the hydrogen. And going upwards, I have my leaving group, which is the bromine. So now the orientation of the H that we want to eliminate, so the H on the beta carbon, and the leaving group. These two groups must be 180 degrees away from one another. And right now we can say, yay, they are 180 degrees away from one another. So they already are in the anti-coplanar orientation. That means the base is going to come in and it is going to extract this hydrogen and go two in, two over, two out. Now, to determine if we're going to get the cis or the trans product, we need to keep the Newman projection as is. Let's draw the same Newman projection, but without the H that we extracted and without the leaving group. So our circle, and then we have a methyl group, a phenyl group, we have a hydrogen, and we have a tert butyl group. So what I want you to do is the two top groups are going to be on the same side and the two bottom groups are going to be on the same side. All you need to do is draw a double bond in between carbon number one and carbon number two, which you can technically not see right now because it is at the back of the Newman projection. So draw a double bond, and then draw the groups in the exact same orientation that you see them in the Newman projection. Bum, 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 bum. So yeah, that would be our product. And to determine if this double bond is going to be cis or trans, we need to prioritize the groups on both sides of the double bond. So to do this, you need to chop the double bond in half. And now we need to rank the groups on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So the phenyl group is going to win on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, the terp-butyl group will win. So we obtain the trans stereoisomer. A good question you might ask, going back to our original substrate, when the substrate is drawn like this with a bunch of dashes and wedges, you might say, well, why didn't we extract this hydrogen? The pink one. Well, now you have to ask, what kind of hydrogen is this? Well, this is a hydrogen on an alpha carbon. And that, that's not what elimination reactions are. 
Elimination reactions always proceed via eliminating a hydrogen at the beta H. We cannot eliminate an alpha hydrogen. We must eliminate a beta hydrogen. So this H is not a beta hydrogen because it is attached directly to the alpha carbon. Therefore, we would have to grab an H from either this beta, but we can't in this case because there is no hydrogens attached to it, or this beta carbon, which is a carbon that is one carbon away from the alpha carbon. And the alpha carbon is the carbon with the leaving group. All right, guys, that is it. That is all. I hope this video was helpful. Please make sure to leave a like, comment, save, and or subscribe to my channel if you find my content helpful. And yeah, I hope you have a great day. And let me know if you have any questions.